All right, we're going to talk about phase diagrams. Phase diagrams, they show up a plot of pressure versus temperature for a particular compound. And it separates the three phases. Now, as I go higher and higher in temperature, what phase, you know, if I start at really low temperatures, what phase would you assume a compound's probably at really low temperatures? Solid. And as you heat it up, it would then become a liquid and then become a gas. And hopefully that helps you remember that we go from solid to liquid to gas as we do this. And maybe I should actually put the G here. Cool. And so the lines here, we call the lines of equilibrium. If you're on any one of these lines, then you actually have two phases at equilibrium with each other. So if I was, say, right here, what two phases would be at equilibrium? Solid and liquid. What kind of, what point would that be? Where solid and liquid are at equilibrium. What phase change point is that? That's your melting point or? So melting is solid to liquid, but liquid to solid is? Freezing. Cool. So that's melting, freezing, fusion, crystallization, same diff. OK. What if I went right here and I talked about a point where liquid and gas were at equilibrium together? What point is that? Yeah, it's your, it's your boiling point. So, and provided we're under normal conditions, what's the pressure under normal conditions? Yeah, provided these are also occurring at one atmospheres, these would be referred to as the normal melting point and the normal boiling point. Cool. So anywhere technically along this line between solid and liquid could be a melting point. Anywhere along this line of equilibrium between liquid and gas could be a boiling point. But specifically the points that also correspond to one atmosphere are the normal melting points and the normal boiling point respectively. Okay. A couple other points we got to identify on here. And one is this point right here. What is that thing? It's your triple point. Why do they call it the triple point? Yeah, you've actually got three phases in equilibrium together. Solid, liquid, and gas. That is the one point where all three phases are present in equilibrium together. And you got one more point way up here. What is that point called? That's your critical point. So your critical point is one that students sometimes have a little trouble grasping. If you look, the line of equilibrium between solid and liquid, it goes all the way to the top of the graph. It never stops. But the line between liquid and gas stops right there. It doesn't go to the edge of the graph. It doesn't keep going. It stops at a certain point. And it's a different point for different gases, but they all stop somewhere. And the idea is this. As you get beyond a certain temperature, well, as you go to higher temperature, what happens to the molecules? They always move faster. And once you get to a certain point, the molecules are going to be moving so fast that they will never condense into a liquid. So never condense into a liquid. So if you look here, if I took a liquid, say right here, and I started heating up that liquid, what's going to happen to that liquid right there? It boils into a gas. OK. What if I took a gas and I started cooling it down? And I, what happens to it right there? it condenses into a liquid. So right when you hit that, you undergo a phase change. And it's obvious to see, right? So back to that 55-gallon drum example, when the superheated steam condensed into a liquid, it was obvious when it happened. It was, happened in an instant, and the whole thing implodes. So if you look, though, let's take a little circuitous route. Instead of taking my, my gas out here and cooling it down, I'm taking my gas, and I'm going to heat it up. And then I'm going to jack up the pressure. And then I'm going to cool it down. And then I'm going to lower the pressure. At what point did it actually turn into a liquid? What's that? You don't know. That's exactly it. You don't know. I never went across the phase change. I started with something that was, yeah, definitely a gas. And I ended with something that was definitely a liquid. But at what point the gas turned into a liquid, I'm not really sure. There was no specific phase change. The critical point is the point beyond which 
you don't really have a gas or a liquid phase change anymore. And we usually don't even call it a gas or a liquid out here. We just call it a fluid or a supercritical fluid. Notice supercritical meaning beyond the critical point fluid, somewhere out there. So either higher in temperature, higher pressure, just a supercritical fluid or just plain fluid out there. There's no transition between liquid and gas beyond that point. OK, this is what a normal compound's phase diagram looks like. And you should be able to identify these lines of equilibrium. So solid liquid, liquid gas, solid gas line of equilibrium. You should be able to identify all the different phase changes that happen to them. If I drew, again, this arrow, what phase change would that be? Solid to liquid's called? Melting, which is also called? Fusion. So if I went from liquid to solid, what's that called? Freezing or crystallization. What if I go from liquid to gas? What's that called? Boiling or vaporization. And again, gas to liquid, what's that called? Condensation. And what if we go again down here? Solid straight to gas, like dry ice. What do you call that? Sublimation. And gas straight to solid, the exact opposite? Deposition. Sweet. So you should be able to, if I put one arrow, one of these six arrows on there, you should know what phase change that actually corresponds to. OK, that's a normal compound. Now that we've given you a normal compound, and this covers 99% of all compounds out there, now we give you two abnormal ones. So we give you water, and water is definitely very abnormal. So solid liquid gas, everything looks fairly normal, except for this part right here. I'll darken it in as much as I can here. The solid liquid line of equilibrium is what's abnormal. So and it's because if you notice, it's got the downhill slope from left to right. We call that a negative slope. If you look on the normal graph, the slope actually goes slightly uphill. And it definitely usually isn't quite this distinct, and it's downhill. I'm overemphasizing. I'm exaggerating a little bit just to prove the point, just to make sure you see what's going on. So again, normal solid liquid line of equilibrium is an uphill slope. But for water, it's downhill. This is really, really, really important. Why? It does explain why ice cubes float, but that's not really why it's important, right? If ice cubes didn't float, would, would it really affect your life a whole lot? <laughs> so the reason this is really, really important, there are two reasons. The lesser important one is that this actually, looking at this, explains, or at least without this, there would be no life on Earth. But the more important reason is without this, there would be no ice hockey, which would be a terrible world indeed, right? So here's the deal. When you play ice hockey, you have ice, let's say, my bad, down here at one atmosphere and a certain temperature. But really narrow blades for skating, right? When you apply your weight, which applies a force over a really narrow area, it generates a rather large pressure. And as the pressure goes up on the ice right underneath your blade, what happens to the ice? It melts. It turns into liquid and becomes more slippery as a result. There's less friction on wet ice than not wet ice, right? And as a result, you can skate a lot faster. Imagine if this wasn't true. Or imagine that instead of ice, we took and, you know, Replace the ice, the normal water ice, with dry ice, carbon dioxide, which doesn't do this. And didn't tell the NHL team that we did this, right? And they'd go skating, and they just couldn't skate as fast. But think of how boring hockey would be if instead of like 35 miles an hour, you could only go like 10 miles an hour. I'm going to check you. I'm coming. I'm still coming. I'm almost there now. I'm going to check you. Yeah, it just wouldn't be the same game, right? So I always thought it'd be a fun prank to pull on an NHL team to do that. It'd be expensive, but a fun prank until I realized that, you know, 
the CO2 would sublime and they'd probably all asphyxiate and die. But you know, besides that, it'd probably be a pretty funny joke, right? So, but that's a consequence of water. Why does water do this again? Why does water have this negative slope? What property of water can we attribute this to? It's hydrogen bonding. If you recall, water forms that network of hydrogen bonds when it freezes. And that's also why it is actually less dense in uh, the solid phase in the liquid. If you notice, when you put pressure on something, it's going to get as small, i.e. as dense as it can. If I jack up the pressure, so in this case on liquid water, at some point the liquid you might actually cross over into being a solid because the solid's more dense. But here, if I jack up the pressure on a liquid, it just stays a liquid. But if I jack up the pressure on a solid, it'll turn into the liquid because the liquid is more dense. Usually for most compounds, the solid is more dense than the liquid, not for water. So not for water. All right. So if you took gasoline and you made gasoline ice cubes and you put the gasoline ice cubes in liquid gasoline, they would just sink right to the bottom. Water's unique in that it's ice cubes float. The last abnormal compound is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, when you first start making the graph, looks fairly normal. Solid liquid gas, the solid liquid line of equilibrium has a positive slope. What sets carbon dioxide apart, though? is where one atmosphere lies, where one atmosphere lies. My question for you is what is the normal boiling point for carbon dioxide? And it's a trick question. What's the normal boiling point for carbon dioxide? It doesn't have one. Awesome. Normal boiling point is on this line. And normal means at one atmosphere. Well, you can't cross the liquid gas line of equilibrium at one atmosphere for carbon dioxide, which is why we call carbon dioxide what? Dry ice. Because solid carbon dioxide doesn't melt at one atmosphere. It goes straight from solid to gas, which is why it's dry. You never get liquidy feeling you know, when you're holding dry ice. It might burn you, actually. But to go straight from solid to gas, it sublimes. If I actually really wanted to have li liquid carbon dioxide, what would I have to do? I'd have to jack up the pressure. Awesome. Awesome. 